I am Dr. Ajit Rayamarji. I am Professor of Pediatrics and Chief Consultant Pediatrician in Kanti Children's Hospital. Uh, my area of work is uh, general pediatrics and I do a little bit of teaching to postgraduate students who specialize in pediatrics and I also do research specially focused on brain infections. Uh, Japanese encephalitis is inflammation or swelling of the brain parenchyma caused by Japanese encephalitis virus. Rights fields or paddy fields are a suitable site for JE transmission in the tropical countries. Uh, paddy ecosystem, presence of Culex trichinorhynchus and uh, uh, warm climate uh, makes uh, so, uh, m most of Asia, uh, importantly Southeast and uh, South Asia, uh, important place for Japanese encephalitis. Uh, more than 99 percent, majority of the patients are asymptomatic. Symptoms are present only in less than 1 percent of the population. The symptoms depends on the site of the uh, illness as well as the stage of the illness. In the first stage, generally the patients are asymptomatic or have mild flu-like illness like fever, running nose, diarrhea and this occurs in the first two, three days of illness. In the next three to five days of illness, which is the stage two, they generally present with frank features of encephalitis like headache, vomiting, seizures, altered sensorium, neck-like rigidity, increased tone, signs of raised intracranial pressures, uh, meningeal irritations such as neck stiffness, Brzezinski's signs, kerning signs seen on examination of the patients. The clinicians rely on these clinical findings to accurately, accurately diagnose Japanese encephalitis in the patients. So in the blood there will be predominantly lymphocytosis and the erythrocyte sedimentation rate would be increased. On uh, electrolytes investigation there will be hyponatremia. What is more important is doing lumbar puncture in these patients and analyzing the cerebrospinal fluid. In the CSF you will have uh, predominantly lymphocyte uh, pleocytosis. The white cells would be between 5 to 1000. They would be polymorph predominance earlier in the first few days of illness followed by lymphocytosis. The blood sugar, CSF sugar would be normal and protein would be slightly elevated. Most of the cases of J are diagnosed by looking at antibodies against J Japanese encephalitis virus in the CSF. Apart from that, on CT scan of brain, there will be bilateral hypodensity seen in the basal ganglia, thalamus uh, predominantly. In the MRI scan, uh, bilateral asymmetric hemorrhages predominantly in the thalamic area would suggest Japanese encephalitis. In the SPECT examination, there would be increased increase flow in the thalamus lentiform nucleus. On EEG, there will be burst suppression pattern, there will be epileptic form discharges and theta, beta and alpha coma are predominantly seen. Antibody ELISA that is anti-JEV, uh, anti IgM antibodies also called MAC ELISA is the most popular diagnostic tool. Uh, in the pair sample, there will be a fourfold rise of anti-JEV antibodies, especially after ninth day of the illness. If that is seen in the CSF, that would be diagnostic for Japanese encephalitis. So Japanese encephalitis potentially does not have definitive treatment and therefore the role of supportive management is very important. The patients can come 
in acute conditions. In that case, we need to cautiously approach these patients. First, secure airway, breathing, circulation. Start oral fluid, uh, feeds as soon as possible. If not, start him or her on nasogastric feeds. If not, you can start on intravenous fluids. These patients would require very close nursing care. Monitor the temperatures, monitor the general conditions, monitor electrolytes, especially these patients are vulnerable to hyponatremia and seizures. They should be closely monitored for raised intracranial pressures and seizures, which are the cause of bad outcome. Uh, intravenous immunoglobulin is a potential drug for the treatment of uh, Japanese encephalitis and it would be a very good adjunct drug uh, to provide uh, and administer to children with Japanese encephalitis. Until then, the other method of treatment would be plasmapheresis and that is one treatment that you could, could uh, provide uh, in order to help children with Japanese encephalitis. Good thing about Zan Japanese encephalitis is they, are, they have a very potent vaccine. Uh, there are 15 vaccines out of which five are widely used around the world. Uh, it has definitely prevented many children to have Japanese encephalitis in Nepal and South Asia because of mass national campaign followed by introduction of the vaccine in the national immunization schedule since the past few years. Because the outcome of the vaccine is excellent and it is actually a very effective vaccine to prevent Japanese encephalitis in this people living in this area and especially tourists from abroad going to this area, it is important that they also should be vaccinated against Japanese encephalitis virus because they are not living in areas where Japanese encephalitis virus is pre predominantly present. Their immunity against this virus is very limited and this virus may have a very adverse outcome on these patients. Japanese encephalitis is a devastating disease. Since there is no treatment, uh, it really produces very bad outcome. The patients affected from 5 to 30 percent, almost one third of the patients die. Two thirds of the patients, up till 60 percent of the patients have neurological sequelae, amongst which more than half of them have severe neurological sequelae. So only half of the children who are affected survive. And especially the outcome is seen in children, five to 15 years, who are very vulnerable, who have a long future, and that is really saddening. The ne residual neurological sequelae are either cognitive or motor or behavioral. In the cognitive, the children may not be able to recognize family members, may not be able to perform well in school, may not be able to remember things, may go on to become very aggressive socially. Physical impairment could be motor, leading to hemiparesis, quadriparesis, or complete hemiparalysis or quadriparalysis. There could be change in tone of the extremities leading to difficulty in walking and doing routine activities. There would be exaggerated reflexes leading to difficulty in coordinating fine movements affecting daily activities that is required for daily living in a patient. There could be other abnormalities such as urinary and stool incontinence leading to a lot of embarrassment amongst families, friends in school. There would be increase cerebral activities, irritations, uh, abnormal sleep pattern, 
abnormal interaction with friends, easily disturbed, lot of school fights, lot of fighting with parents and peers at home and this have made life devastating and when we have followed them patients for more than 25 30 years this subtle impairment of cognition and behavior has hampered normal life in those patients even after 25 to 30 years the clinical status the patient has when we discharge is not the definitive uh, outcome of the patients. It takes around three months for the outcome to be seen in case of Japanese encephalitis because the illness generally continues for three months period. Therefore, it is important to follow up these children at three months in order to find out what the actual outcome was. When we have followed up patients up till 27 to 30 years, we found out Severe neurological city, uh, uh, sequelae at discharge have converted into complete recovery at three months' time. Subtle motor deficits of uh, hemiparesis that we have uh, not seen at the time of discharge, the patients have developed after three months of illness. 